Okay, so we have this uh, PPP project. This is a small town in Madhya Pradesh, western Madhya Pradesh. It's called Khandwa. We have this PPP project, uh, which is about 106 crores, and it is approved under the central government scheme called uh, UID SMT, Urban uh, Infrastructure Development in Small and Medium Towns. Uh, this project was approved in 2008, and uh, out of 106 crores, 103 crores is the approved cost. The remaining uh, around 3 crores is for project preparation, consultancy, and contingency expenses. Uh, out of 103 crores, 93 crores are um, coming from uh, the, the central government as a uh, fund to KMC for, for this, pro uh, this project. Uh, the remaining share of, uh, um, uh, in fact, yes, uh, the project, uh, the approved project cost is uh, by, uh, by the central government is 93.25 crores out of the approved project cost of 103.61 crores. But uh, when the lowest, when the bids were invited for this project, the lowest bid that came for the project, for executing the project under BOT was uh, of rupees 115 crores. So the project cost had already inflated. And uh, the ONM cost uh, uh, submitted by the, the, this private company, which is from Hyderabad, it, it's called Vishwa Infrastructure and Services Limited, was around 7.62 crores per annum. Uh, the tariff quoted was 11.95 kiloliters. Uh, for 45 MLD water supply, and this would be executed in two phases, uh, construction phase and ONM phase. Uh, just to give an update, uh, this project was approved in 2008, but as yet the construction phase has not been over. It's six years. Yeah, yeah. These are the three figures. Yeah. 106 is the actual cost, actual approved cost by the central government for the project. It approved 93 crores as its. Uh, support for the project. Government support, budgetary budgeted support, right? support for the project, 93 crores out of 106. Yes, the project, when the lowest bid, bids were called and the lowest bid submitted for the project was 115 crores. The difference between this 115 and 93 comes from the private company, okay. which it recovers through the tariffs that is, it has quoted. This, this, this was estimated by the municipal corporation. This was approved by the central government. And this was estimated by the private company. So, Khandwa is a small town, you know, around two, two and a half lakhs population. Uh, so, we talk about cost. So, out of this, uh, the 22 crores, uh, the private concessioner is investing 5.51 crores, 25% as stipulated by the Government of India guidelines as equity and 16.55 crores, 75% of the of its its share as debt and this is partly raised from the International Financial Corporation of the World Bank. The internal uh, estimated internal rate of return uh, by the company from the project is 12%. The main components of the project include a 45 MLD water supply, a water treatment plant, um, around 6 AO, OHTs, those are overhead tanks and bulk and distreated water uh, pipelines of around uh, 30 kilometers in, um, in, in the city. Uh, the raw water is to be pumped from uh, the Indra Sagar Reservoir, which is on the Narmada River. It's 52 kilometers from the town. Uh, if you look at the contract, there are several issues that are coming up. Uh, the tariff is a huge issue. Uh, who's going to control uh, the water operations? I want to explain. I think it's just important to... So tariff, tariff actually is a huge issue because uh, 11.95 is the base tariff actually. So uh, uh, it starts from there. On, on top of that, then uh, you, you have different uh, uh, taxes, uh, the service tax and the VAT and different other surcharges would be added. So we have calculated uh, uh, it would be for, a, for a family of five, it would come to uh, around uh, four, four fifty rupees per month uh, for uh, uh, water consumption of around, uh, if you take at 135 LPCD of the urban water supply norm, 
then it comes to around 400 rupees per month if we include uh, the space tariff plus the surcharges and 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 the different other taxes included so that's one point but uh, this is the base tariff because uh, i'm calling this base tariff because the contract has um, a, a, con uh, a clause which states that the uh, this tariff would be increased by 10% every third year automatically and in case there is an increase in onm expenses raw water charges electricity charges the company can go to uh, the 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 municipal corporation uh, which is uh, actually under the contract there is a price review committee which has been set up uh, which includes uh, the representatives of the company of the state government um, and uh, some other officials the company can go to the price review committee and ask for uh, uh, for a tariff increase in case there is a uh, there is a increase in raw water charges or electricity charges and its onm expenses so 11.95 is 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 uh, is the base tariff which is uh, going to increase every third year or in case of any other emergency and then uh, there is the issue of control uh, basically um, it's being a, a, a push and pull kind of a thing uh, in a lot of statements the the municipal corporation says that it will control uh, the water supply operations however uh, in several other cases the uh, the private company is making statements that it will control uh, the the operations so it's it's still in kind of you know um, not in clear black and white that who will really be controlling the 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 operations transparency is a huge issue because uh, documents and uh, are not available uh, records are not available um, it's not easy to access uh, the information uh, about the project um, the issue of accountability is also not clear in the in the contract uh, who will be really accountable because uh, uh, this is a classic problem of the ppp projects where you are really not sure because the government says that the private company is only operating the project we are really accountable for the whole thing but then on the other hand when it actually comes to implementation and it goes on the ground for the consumer or the resident you really see that the private player or the private employees are handling the whole thing the government doesn't have much of a say or the government officials don't really have, uh, you know are able to interfere into into their operations so accountability is becoming a major problem and then regulation and monitoring these are these are also quite um, uh, controversial uh, issues because according to uh, the central government guidelines we need to have a regulator in place before actually these ppp projects are being implemented the state has recently passed the regulatory authority bill but it's not functional as yet on the other hand if we are asking a municipal corporation which doesn't have capacity is enough to control a private company i think regulation and monitoring is is too far fetched a thought so um, from the perspective of the people these these are really uh, you know uh, big issues uh, uh, that are coming up then um, uh, this contract um, which is supposed to be a model contract states uh, uh, in a clause uh, that you know uh, there would be no parallel competing water supply to the supply that the private company is uh, providing that means you can't have an alternative source for water supply other than the uh, the uh, the private uh, supply that that the residents are having uh, the larger implication um, uh, of this particular clause that you uh and in fact one of the statements from the from the official of that uh, that private company in the in the local media came out that we will be stopping uh, you know water supply from all the hand pumps and dug wells and tube wells and people would be prohibited from using those they would be particularly banned for you know getting water from those sources doro i think one issue if you can just put forward what is the implication of this the financial side for the comp, uh, for the corporation because they are supposed to collect that whatever 7 mm -hmm. crores or Seven something point. and give to the corporation so if you can just say how much they are collecting now what is the implication of that in fact that that is also uh, quite uh, uh, not clear as such because the contract says that the company would be involved in um, treating water 
supplying uh, treated water and then distributing and collecting uh, the, the, the charges from the people. But now it has become a bit of uh, a bit messy because uh, the municipal corporation says that the company would supply the bulk water. Distribution and collection of charges would be part of the municipal corporation responsibility. Oh, okay. So it's still not clear what is going to happen because the project is still under construction phase. So we don't know what, what, what will happen. But in the original contractual clauses, the company is going to overtake all these uh, aspects. No, no, but what about uh, the finance? The, on, the, on the financial terms, uh, Khandwa is a small town of 2.5 lakh population. Uh, it has uh, uh, O&M expenses on water supply. Uh, the figures that we got from the corporation is around uh, 3 crores. It recovers around 1.5 uh, per annum. So uh, it has a loss on it. And under this project, now it is supposed to recover 7.62 crores from the local people. So the tariff which is of around, you know, uh, 50 rupees for the BPL and 100 rupees for uh, the, uh, for the uh, rest of the society, le rest of the community, would increase by almost twice or thrice um, in those terms. And in fact, uh, on tariff issues uh, as well, it is not clear because initially they have stated that uh, they, will, they will charge around uh, 200 rupees from uh, the APL families and uh, 100 rupees from the BPL families. And, but this is just to begin with and this is a political kind of a stance yeah. to you know, push the project through and make it more acceptable to the local people. But once it starts, uh, how the tariffs will change and what kind of, you know, uh, increases uh, will come in is really the important issue here so, so justifications primarily w uh, what we talked about earlier uh, in fact uh, in, if we look at the macro macroeconomic terms there is a scheme from the central government which uh, clearly states to the local bodies that you want to have funds you can sign on a reform agenda you can have funds and then you can you know invest uh, those funds can be invested into um, urban uh, services like water and sanitation and transport and whatever. So there is this small corporation, uh, local body uh, in a state, uh, and this is this this is replicated across the country in various other you know small and medium towns where we all know that the financial condition of uh, of uh, urban local bodies is not not that good. They they really they are really facing uh, you know financial crunch. They need <coughs> funds to execute projects. There are political, uh, you know, motivations to bring projects into into these small towns because, of course, there there is there is there are chances of kickbacks and different other you know benefits that need that can be garnered from from those pro the, those projects. And specifically, if we look at the dimension, uh, a local body which has a uh, budget of around 10 crores gets a project of around 100 crores. That is a huge amount of money for the officials. For the for the political you know leaders uh, in that particular local body, so uh, and of course the justification co comes from different other uh, uh, operational, technical, and kind of uh, you know uh, financial aspects. Like uh, the the people will get 24 by 7 water supply. That was one of the major justifications. Uh, the water will come from uh, Narmada, uh, which is a perennial kind of a source, uh, which was one of the justifications that was put forth. Then um, it was also said that you know uh, the tariffs will come down. So these were the kind of uh, justifications that were given uh, to the local people to really you know make the project acceptable. And uh, uh, I think uh, this this was this was primarily the way uh, it was it was pushed. See, I don't have an answer for that. That's a policy decision. But of course, we know, we have the opinion that if, and the local people and the local movement is saying that if the government can give 93 crores, why it can't give 20 more crores? You have to tell us. Which one? Yeah, yeah. No, so basically, the, the, recent, the recent research that we have done on specifically on this town was yeah. to look at the alternatives and how to yeah. really improve the system without really privatizing it and without really going into such high investment, capital investment kind of an option. The town already, it's not that there's a town which is, you know, uh, in a desert and there's no water supply. It has uh, 
a good system. In fact, uh, in uh, historically it has been, you know, uh, gazetted that this particular town has a good water supply system yes. and it's catering to around 60 to 70 percent of the population through, you know, pipe water supply and it has good water resources around the town, you know, which are capable of supplying water to the, uh, to the town based on the urban water supply norms mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, kind of... Uh, create a self self sufficiency kind of a model and in fact that's uh, a big resource which is already there which is supplying uh, water to uh, to to this particular um, uh, town on the other hand if we look at uh, jnnurm uids smd they uh, i mean if we, if we just talk about the reforms agenda which talks about you know uh, encouraging ppps and you know if the ulb is not able to put put 10% of its own contribution then they can bring in private companies but on the other hand, there's never a push on uh, the, uh, the reforms conditions of, you know, rainwater harvesting. None of the ULBs have taken up rainwater harvesting as a serious, you know, kind of a mission or uh, wastewater reuse. These are two important conditionalities in the, sorry? Why? Because of their incapacities, uh, because, of, because of the political, uh, lack of political will. They, they can't really, you know. Yeah. And it's not and, and it's not easy. It's not easy. You really have to go and convince people to you know build rainwater having structures in their houses. You really have to go and on awareness drives. It's not an easy exercise, but it's easy to you know tender and ask for ten percent contribution from a private company. So these important reform uh, uh, points have been forgotten, and we have just focused. The ULB is speci specifically are focusing on on private participation because it's easy to get 90% of the funds from the center and bring in a private company to put in 10%. So, uh, I'm saying that uh, uh, if, if you looked at rainwater harvesting as, a, as an important, you know, component, wastewater reuse as an important component, use of existing, you know, water resources as an important component, there are ample uh, opportunities and potential to, you know, supply water. It, it, it think, I, I think it, 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 it requires a lot of... Um, citizen mobilization, it requires a lot of engagement with the local officials and the state government officials because unless and until we have decisions from them, it, it's not going to move forward. The report uh, on this particular project, um, I think I was supposed to come to uh, that, the serious objections filed by uh, the, 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 these, these people from the, from the town and on the basis of that, uh, there was this uh, committee which was formed by the state government to investigate about this project and it recommended that this project should be cancelled. Okay. It's not worthwhile, the, the uh, public opinion is against it, the pro process had serious irregularities uh, and it should be cancelled, the water supply should remain in the public hands, it should, uh, you know, uh, the uh, water board should be formed to, to improve the... The state government is sitting on it. It's not taking any decision, decision on it. On, it. it it's on its own report, it's not taking any decision, and the project is going for, for, uh, forward. But so the, I think yeah. we have our own limitations. How further we can go? I mean, we have huge amounts of mobilization. Lot of people coming and talking about it, pressing the government to you know form a uh, investigation committee. The committee lobbying with the committee, you know, putting giving them details and supplying them information and analysis and all those things. The committee bringing out a very good report, but nothing is happening now.